Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Monday, September 14th. As always, the thoughts in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information for your location. Looking at the Atlantic, we continue to have multiple storms. Most of this video is going to focus on Hurricane Sally, but I'm going to briefly mention we had Hurricane Paulette pass right over the island of Bermuda overnight last night and this morning, bringing hurricane conditions to the island. The storm is now moving away. Conditions are improving in Bermuda, and Paulette is not expected to be a further threat to land as it scoots off across the North Atlantic. We also have Tropical Depression Rene now nearing, nearing dissipation in the Central Atlantic, also not expected to be a threat. We have Tropical Storm Teddy, which is expected to become a powerful hurricane as it moves northwestward across the open Central Atlantic, not expected to be a threat to land areas during the next five days. If we look at the NHC forecast, though, uh, as we get beyond day five here, this forecast has been nudging a little bit to the left in the longer term. Term. And it is possible that within seven or eight days or so, it could be uncomfortably close to Bermuda. So we may see the island once again dealing with a hurricane threat in the longer range. Can't say for sure yet, it's too far out, uh, but we'll keep an eye on that as the next few days go by to see if that becomes a problem. And then we also have Tropical Storm Vicky. We're already to the V storm here. Only a couple names to go, and we'll have to start on Greek letters for naming these things. Uh, this is expected to dissipate soon as it's undergoing a lot of wind shear and is not expected to be a threat to land. And then we may have other waves coming off that have to be watched as well. So definitely a busy peak of the hurricane season right now. And we have a land threat to the United States, Hurricane Sally, which has changed a lot since we last discussed the storm 24 hours ago. If we look at the close-up visible satellite loop, we'll see a very different looking cyclone. Yesterday we had a sheared cyclone. You could see the center of circulation at the surface to the west of the thunderstorm activity. This morning we had a big change though. We had a big convective burst on the northeast side that pulled the low level center underneath of it. And we now have a more vertically aligned cyclone with a circulation that you can see here, low and mid-level circulations vertically stacked. And we've been talking about this as a structural milestone that the storm has to meet before it can become a hurricane. And that's exactly what happened during the first part of today. And we now have Sally as a hurricane with what NHC estimates as being max winds of 100 miles per hour as it strengthened a lot this morning. Now, if we look at the recon data, we have had a little bit more subtlety to that evolution today. We had quick strengthening during the morning hours since about lunchtime, about five hours before I recorded this video. We really haven't seen that much change in the overall strength of the system. The pressure here on the aircraft, it says 990 here, it was actually about 987, is about the same pressure that was measured five or six hours ago. So we haven't actually seen that much intensification during the afternoon. And so there may be a little bit of a pause here, a little bit of a break in the intensity. And the plane is measuring consistent winds of about 85 or 90 miles per hour at a maximum, not really getting up to the 100 miles per hour that was observed earlier in the morning at one point. And one of the reasons this might be happening is because the wind field is still asymmetric. The hurricane ramped up in a very quick fashion. And for that reason, we don't yet have a very circular core wind field. You can see from just this plane that we have very strong winds way out here on the northeast side. Note how far they are from the center. And we have lighter winds close to the center on the northeast side, tight, strong winds on the west side. and. There's also very strong winds here on the north side where an oil rig at an elevation of several hundred feet has been observing winds over 100 miles an hour. So what we have is basically a wrapping band. If I draw the maximum wind area here, you're going to see it shaped sort of like this. And because the max wind band is shaped like this, it's not yet completed all the way around the center in a nice circular region. What we really want this to look like is something that's very close to the center so that we have sort of a donut of strong wind that would denote a mature hurricane. We don't have that yet, and that means a couple of things. One is that we may see these uh, variations in the storm's strength while it tries to organize and wrap up into a more circular cyclone, and it may also wobble around a little bit with track. If we look now at the radar imagery out of Mobile, Alabama from Mark Nissenbaum's FSU page, we'll see Sally spinning away here to the south of Mobile, which is up here. There's Pensacola to the east, 
and New Orleans over here in Louisiana to the west. And we can see the storm not moving very quickly, spinning around here. And you can see similar to the wind structure I just showed you on recon data, we have this band that kind of arcs in and then wraps around the center. So again, we have very strong winds off to the east, strong to the north, trying to wrap down now to the west of the center, with this side still kind of loose to the southeast. And the, the key for Sally going forward in terms of how strong the storm could get is that now that it has a stacked vortex, uh, it now needs to form an eye wall if it's going to get substantially stronger than it is now. And we don't really see one on the radar structure at the moment. We don't see a ring of yellow around a clear eye. That would be the next structural milestone that Sally would need to attain in order to really ramp up more than it already has. Now, whether it's able to do that will depend a lot on how it interacts with the wind shear that is still impacting Sally. We can see some upper level clouds here on the south side coming out of the west, and this is continuing to impart some shear, and we do see that the south side of the system is comparatively lacking in thunderstorms compared to the north side, and there could be a little bit of dry air pushed in here by the shear, even though the vortex is now vertically aligned. Recon data out here, though, indicates that this air mass is not particularly dry, and because of that, it may be less detrimental than it would be for other storms. That said, there could still be some disruption, and that's probably partially why we don't see an eye wall forming just yet. Now, the modeling guidance that we have today suggests that as soon as Sally begins to turn toward the north here, that's when it's going to have its best opportunity to form an inner core and an eye wall. And there's a lot of guidance that suggests that a quick burst of intensification just before moving ashore will occur. So this is a substantial risk. And with Sally having winds of 85 to 100 miles per hour right now, how high could those get? Well, it's hard to say. Right now, NHC says the maximum will be about 110. The worst case scenario could probably see winds getting up to maybe 120, uh, somewhere around there. The exact details, of course, don't matter too much because they are dangerous winds either way. But in terms of the ceiling on this, it's likely to be somewhere in the neighborhood of Category 3 intensity. The two things holding it down from doing any more are probably the fact that, again, we have this shear, which will eventually increase as it comes toward landfall and probably start disrupting the storm quickly once it moves ashore. But also the fact that if it's moving too slowly here and it spends till, say, Wednesday to get ashore, because we're still not sure exactly how long it's going to wait to come inland, if it waits until Wednesday, at that point it may have been sitting in here long enough that the water un underneath it starts to cool enough that it limits the storm's intensification. It isn't going to limit it today or even tomorrow, but if we're getting into Wednesday, that may start to be something to consider. At this point, we're still not sure if it's going to be on shore uh, by Wednesday or not. And that's again because of this very slow movement that's being induced by the competing steering currents above the storm, where on the GFS here, if we look at the steering sounding, we have at the low levels uh, easterly flow, but in the upper levels we have westerly flow. And these two are competing to steer the storm, and right now they're starting to play a tug of war where neither one is really winning. And we can see on the radar that this storm is not making a lot of progress toward the west right now. We are expecting it to still come a little bit further westward, but we have seen a shift in general toward the east today because the storm is not moving as quickly westward as models predicted yesterday. That may be in part because of how much stronger it has become this afternoon. For that reason, when this turn north ultimately occurs, it may no longer be all the way over by Louisiana and New Orleans. It may instead be offshore of Mississippi and Alabama, and we could see a track that takes it right into this area near Mobile. And we've seen uh, the risk of this looking a little bit higher today, uh, with Alabama now being right in the crosshairs of where Sally could end up. And this is going to include even portions of western Florida Panhandle, where areas like Pensacola and Destin may have to uh, deal with uh, the core of Sally getting uncomfortably close here, given the trends that we've been seeing today. Now, I want to point out, though, this does not necessarily mean by any stretch that no impacts will occur to Louisiana and Mississippi given these trends. Uh, first of all, the current official forecast still has a landfall in Mississippi. But secondly, remember this track is doing a curve. It's turning toward the right, which means that it could approach 
the mouth of the Mississippi River, brings storm surge wind and flooding rain to Louisiana, then turn north, bring conditions that are severe to the Mississippi coastline, and then continue northeastward and bring the same conditions to Alabama and then Florida. So we're really talking about the potential to bring dangerous weather to all four of these states because the forecast track has a curve to it. So just because you hear about impacts increasing or risks increasing to one particular state, uh, that doesn't mean that any of these other states aren't necessarily going to see impacts. So just keep that in mind as you view these forecasts. This is the official one from the NHC now showing that curve still getting very close, uncomfortably close to eastern Louisiana and Mississippi and hurricane warnings remain in effect for all of southeastern Louisiana and Mississippi. We have the forecast track now forecast to come ashore sometime on late Tuesday night, early Wednesday morning in eastern Mississippi. Again, this could change back and forth a little bit. We've seen a little bit of a trend to the east today. There is substantial risk that this tries to come into Alabama or a western Florida instead. We'll keep an eye on that. It's going to be a little bit of uh, wobble watching in the sense that when the storm is moving this slowly, the hour to hour movements of the storm could matter a lot when this gets near the coast. Uh, but also exactly when it comes ashore is a little bit uncertain here with the forecast being for late Tuesday night. It could be a little before that. It could be a little after that. Some models suggest it may wait until well into Wednesday morning or afternoon before coming on shore. And if that happens, we're talking about a more prolonged period of storm surge and heavy rain and the storm intensity may change if the landfall time changes. So the bottom line is we have a very slow meandering storm, obviously a big pain, a big risk. Uh, to many folks here in this section of coastline, just make sure your preparations are being rushed to completion today as time is running out in places like Louisiana where adverse conditions are already beginning and we've had rain bands raking uh, the Florida Panhandle, Southern Alabama, and Southern Mississippi already this afternoon. So we're going to quickly go downhill from here and you're running out of time uh, to have uh, preparations completed for the arrival of this storm. Now again, water is a big concern here in general because of the slow movement, so flooding is expected. Flash flooding due to rainfall from the landfall point extending north and east as the storm moves over Alabama and potentially Georgia in a few days, bringing flooding to the region. We have seen this flooding risk shift a little bit to the east since yesterday and a little bit more away from New Orleans given that the forecast track is a little farther from New Orleans now, and that's of course good news, but don't let your guard up just yet as we can't guarantee that this doesn't sneak over toward the Mississippi Delta and start bringing rain bands right over Lake Pontchartrain in New Orleans and storm surge into southeast Louisiana as well. So can't really rest easy here as this is still too close uh, to assume that it's going to be safe. Uh, risk is increasing though a little bit more toward the east as we've seen that little shift and so now Mobile, Alabama squarely in the center of this flooding zone and we're also going to see surge values potentially come up for Mobile Bay. Right now four to seven feet is expected and seven to eleven feet over by Louisiana and western Mississippi and again we may see these largest values shift just a little bit to the east here if the forecast track continues to shift east but we can't guarantee anything and right now given how flood prone some of these areas of Louisiana are, even if the storm is sitting way over here south of Mobile Bay, remember that a lot of this wind out of the northeast can cause flooding and storm surge on the backside of the storm. So it doesn't have to be the eye coming over to cause flooding. And even well east of the center, southerly wind will push uh, ocean water onto normally dry ground as far east as the Big Bend of Florida. This is a very surge prone region, so make sure if you're in a flooding zone and you get an evacuation order that you do obey it as uh, the ocean is nothing to mess with. That's it for now on Sally. Stay tuned to the National Hurricane Center and your local National Weather Service office for the best information for your location. If you want to follow them on social media, you can go to weather.gov slash social media to follow their updates. You can also follow me on Twitter at Tropical Tidbits for more frequent updates that I post there throughout the day. That's it for now. Stay safe, everyone.